Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the Douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 36 in the Douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 37 in the RSV. This is not a short Psalm, but I think I can still get through it in one episode, so here goes. A psalm for David himself. Be not emulous of evildoers, nor envy them that work iniquity. For they shall shortly wither away as grass, and as the green herb shall quickly fall. People who do evil sometimes seem to get the best of everything in life, but their prosperity passes away, while the prosperity of God's chosen is everlasting. Trust in the Lord, and do good, and dwell in the land, and thou shalt be fed with its riches. Delight in the Lord, and he will give thee the requests of thy heart. Commit thy way to the Lord, and trust in him, and he will do it. Obedience to God is the path to true happiness, and if we really want to have our wishes granted, the only place to have that is heaven. And he will bring forth thy justice as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. These analogies both mean that God gives justice just as surely as light follows darkness, and noon follows sunrise. In fact, I'd say more surely, since God is more reliable than any astral body. Be subject to the Lord, and pray to him. Envy not the man who prospereth in his way, the man who doth unjust things. Cease from anger, and leave rage. Have no emulation to do evil. Emulation can mean the desire for superiority, so an emulation to do evil would be a desire to be superior at or through evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off, But they that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the land. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, and thou shalt seek his place, and shalt not find it. In the end, evildoers are removed, and those who choose to follow Jesus will be left, and won't be able to find evildoers any more. Interestingly, this happened once already with Noah's Ark. It will ultimately happen again. But the meek shall inherit the land, and shall delight in abundance of peace. The sinner shall watch the just man, and shall gnash upon him with his teeth, but the Lord shall laugh at him, for he foreseeth that his day shall come. God knows the future, and he knows that eventually impenitent sinners lose out, and just men win. The wicked have drawn out the sword, they have bent their bow, to chase down the poor and needy, to kill the upright of heart. Let their sword enter into their own hearts, and let their bow be broken." We pray that evildoers who try to victimize good people with weapons of various types will ultimately fall victim to the very weapons they use against others. This often happens, and nothing could be more just. Better is a little to the just than the great riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken in pieces, but the Lord strengtheneth the just. A good person can make better use of a small amount of resources than an evil person can of a vast fortune. This is because people with evil intentions misuse the things they're given, and often just make people suffer or are wasteful with their goods, while good people see the value of what little they have and try to use it to help others and serve God. The Lord knoweth the days of undefiled, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be confounded in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be filled, because the wicked shall perish And the enemies of the Lord, presently, after they shall be honored and exalted, shall come to nothing, and vanish like smoke. It may seem like evildoers receive honor at the moment, but it won't last, and they'll ultimately perish, while the righteous have eternal life to look forward to. The sinner shall borrow, and not pay again, but the just sheweth mercy, and shall give. Sinners are always looking for ways to get ahead without paying back what they owe, while good people are generous to others. For such as bless him shall inherit the land, but such as curse him shall perish. Our reaction to good people will affect our fate. If we hate good people, it's not looking too good for us. With the Lord shall the steps of a man be directed, and he shall like well his way. When he shall fall, he shall not be bruised, for the Lord putteth his hand under him. I have been young, and now am old, and I have not seen the just forsaken, nor his seed seeking bread. He sheweth mercy, and lendeth all the day long, and his seed shall be in blessing. 
These verses imply that following God makes you more able to recover from and deal with the tragedies of this life. This is certainly true in some ways, since embracing humility will make you less likely to take offense at others' treatment of you, and having patience and self-control make you more able to endure hard times while remaining strong-willed against evil. The virtues that God and his church encourage through their teachings are good for helping people to cope with the hard lot they frequently need to endure on their path to eternal prosperity. Decline from evil, and do good, and dwell forever and ever. For the Lord loveth judgment, and will not forsake his saints. They shall be preserved forever. The unjust shall be punished, and the seed of the wicked shall perish. But the just shall inherit the land, and shall dwell therein forevermore. When this verse says that the Lord loves judgment, this means that he loves good judgment. It does not mean that he loves condemnation. We shouldn't go around pronouncing others condemned, but we should exercise good judgment, both in governing our lives and in telling the difference between right and wrong. The mouth of the just shall meditate wisdom, and his tongue shall speak judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and his steps shall not be supplanted. When a person meditates on the teachings of God and he gives good advice, keeping the law of God carefully, no one else will take his place. Often, evil people try to cheat and take the rewards that someone else deserves, but that won't happen with those who walk the path of authentic justice. The wicked watcheth the just man, and seeketh to put him to death. But the Lord will not leave him in his hands, nor condemn him when he shall be judged. Expect the Lord, and keep his way, and he will exalt thee to inherit the land. When the sinners shall perish, thou shalt see." Evildoers are always trying to cause harm to decent people, either out of jealousy or because they actually hate it when people do good things, or for some other reason. God will reward those who keep his word, but not evildoers. I have seen the wicked highly exalted, and lifted up like the cedars of Lebanus. And I passed by, and lo, he was not. And I sought him, and his place was not found. This refers, as it did in the previous psalm, to tall, strong trees on a mountain near Israel. David is saying that evildoers are routinely placed in high, strong positions they don't deserve in this life. However, they ultimately all fail. Keep innocence, and behold justice, for there are remnants for the peaceable man. But the unjust shall be destroyed together, the remnants of the wicked shall perish. When two evil people with powerful weapons both decide they want each other's land and attack each other, then one kills the other, dying of his own wounds, who gets to eat the fruit of the trees on their land? It's the person standing on the sidelines, not participating in the violence. God always has great gifts to give to those who commit to doing the right thing. But the salvation of the just is from the Lord, and he is their protector in the time of trouble, and the Lord will help them and deliver them, and he will rescue them from the wicked and save them because they have hoped in him. Those who place their hope in God will be protected by him, because he's always there, offering them eternal life at the end of this temporary one. This life sometimes feels like one long downward plummet, but there's no parachute as good as the one that God can offer us. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.